The Satanic Rides of Dracula is the seventh and final film to feature Christopher Lee as Count Dracula. The film was also the third to unite Peter Cushing as Van Helsing with Lee, following Dracula, released in 1958, and Dracula AD 1972, released in the year 1972. But did you know Christopher Lee played Count Dracula ten times in total? Let's have a quick recap of the history of Christopher Lee as Count Dracula. Christopher Lee is without a doubt the actor who has played the iconic vampire more times than any other actor, in total 10 times. 11 in fact if you want to include his very short uncredited role alongside Peter Cushing in the 1970s comedy movie One More Time. Lee played the Count 7 times for Hammer, those are the Dracula movies that which he is best known for, and 3 more times for movies outside of Hammer the first being in 1959, a movie called Uncle Was a Vampire. The second time he would play Dracula outside of Hammer was in a 1970 movie titled Count Dracula, in which Lee portrayed a more faithful version of the character from Bram Stoker's novel. And the last time that Christopher Lee played Count Dracula outside of Hammer was in 1974 in a French comedy movie titled Dracula and Son. But the Hammer movies are where Christopher Lee really gets to shine as Count Dracula. Now, unfortunately, The Satanic Rites of Dracula is the one which I've seen the least amount of times, and I've never quite wrapped my head around it. Whenever I do watch the film, it never moves up on the ranking list. It's stayed at the bottom spot for quite some time now, and probably will remain there for a long time to come. The original working title for the film was Dracula is dead and well and living in London. Bizarre, right? When speaking about the original title, Christopher Lee said, I'm doing it under protest. I think it is fatuous. I can think of 20 adjectives. Fatuous, pointless, absurd. It's not a comedy, but it's got a comic title. I don't see the point. The title was then changed again, but cut short, to Dracula is still living in London. I personally would have preferred if the last film in the franchise wouldn't have been this movie and instead would have been Dracula AD 1972. At least then I could say that the final film in the franchise is one that I really like. This on the other hand, yeah, not so much. Personally, for me, this film is the least interesting, the most boring and the most bizarre. The film at times doesn't even feel like a Hammer Dracula movie. Now you could say the same thing about Dracula AD 1972, as both films are set in the same time period, include returning characters, except this time Van Helsing's granddaughter, Jessica, is played by Joanna Lumley instead of Stephanie Beecham, and then to top it off you just have a little bit of Dracula sprinkled on top. At least AD 1972 didn't have spies running around shooting each other. The film doesn't know what it wants to be. It's a mixed hodgepodge of genres, from horror, science fiction, crime, it even comes off as an outbreak movie at times. Oh, and it's also a vampire film, just in case you didn't know. But with all that being said, there are some good things about the satanic rites of Dracula that I actually do like. The main thing, of course, is seeing Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing as Dracula and Van Helsing. It's just a shame that this film would be their final film together as these iconic characters. This wouldn't be Cushing's last time playing Van Helsing, however. He last played the character in the 1974 Hammer film, The Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires. In the Satanic Rites of Dracula, Van Helsing is no different. If anything, I'd say he's the star of the movie. Cushing always shines as Van Helsing. It really doesn't matter if he was given a bad script. He'll make his scenes amazing. Dracula in this movie is very different compared to other versions of the character we've seen from Lee. In the Satanic Rites of Dracula, the Count wants to create a plague-like virus to wipe out the whole of humanity. Okay. Van Helsing's reason for this is that Dracula is a cursed soul and wants the ultimate revenge by bringing down the whole universe with him. But just suppose he yearns for final peace. Then he'd want to bring down the whole universe with him. Although this is my least favourite version of Dracula that Lee has portrayed in the Hammer movies, he does have some decent amount of dialogue here, even though Christopher Lee would have more than likely hated it. He also gets to project his voice this time round, something that we rarely hear. Four horsemen of my created apocalypse. Four carriers of the plague who will infect their miserable brethren. You, Van Helsing, are now one of the four. One scene in the film that will always stand out is when Van Helsing plans on killing Dracula and he makes a silver bullet from a crucifix. Yeah, you heard me right, a silver bullet, which is something that would usually be used to kill werewolves, 
but whatever. At this point, I think the franchise has just given up and they're just trying to find new ways of trying to kill Dracula. He then meets up with Dracula in some headquarters, which was built on the same churchyard from Dracula AD 1972. But Dracula is going by the name of Denim. They have a face-to-face -face conversation, and it's the only time we've seen Dracula and Van Helsing have a quote-unquote real conversation. In this scene, to disguise his voice from Dracula, Christopher Lee kind of sounds like he's doing an impression of Bela Lugosi. How ironic. Van Helsing intentionally knocks some books and files onto the floor, but makes it look like an accident. This is just so he can put a Bible in between them and place them back on the desk. Dracula then slams his hand onto the Bible and this gives away his identity. Van Helsing then attempts to shoot Dracula, but is stopped by one of his servants. The servants then tell Dracula to kill Van Helsing, but Dracula thinks that death for Van Helsing would be too simple. So Van Helsing is taken to a house where the satanic ritual is taking place. After a lot of dialogue, the room eventually catches fire and Dracula flees the house, causing Van Helsing to go after him. This leads me on to the death of Dracula. Considering the film is Christopher Lee's last time playing Count Dracula for Hammer, the Count's death isn't too bad. Whenever a character in a Hammer vampire film brings up ways to kill a vampire, they will list off the obvious ways to kill a vampire and then they'll slip in a new one, and you can bet that's how the vampire will meet its demise. This time round, a vampire can be killed by a hawthorn tree. The reason is because of its connection to Christ. Well, when Van Helsing is outside, there just so happens to be a hawthorn bush nearby. Van Helsing calls Dracula near and the Count struggles through the hawthorn bush, cutting his hands and face along the way. Eventually, the Count falls with a crown of thorns on his head, resembling Jesus Christ. Van Helsing takes a fence post and stakes Dracula through the heart once again, as he crumbles into dust for the final time. In conclusion, The Satanic Rites of Dracula is a strange movie to say the least, very lacklustre. I'm surprised I managed to say this much about the movie, considering it's the least watched in the franchise for me. What makes this film stand out is Lee and Cushing as Dracula and Van Helsing. Whenever they're on screen, either together or separately, then I'm interested. Whenever they're off screen, I'm not interested. It's as simple as that. I'd say the only time I became interested when Cushing and Lee were not on screen was the scene that featured the vampire women down in the basement. Other than that, I think it's unfortunate that this was the last time we saw Cushing and Lee as Dracula and Van Helsing, and this is what we got. I would have loved if they went back to basics like the original 1958 movie, with the traditional Hammer gothic elements. Thankfully, I have the other films in the series to watch countless times and never get bored of. Unfortunately. This isn't one of them.